Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this in one go, therefore I apologise if I stumble over my words going forwards, and indeed if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it can't be helped, and hopefully it's not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision related video here on my channel, and it is my second Q&A. A few days ago, at the time of recording this video, I uploaded a video that was about one and a half minutes long, asking you to leave me questions that I would answer in a future video. This is that future video, and I did receive a fair few questions, so thank you to those of you who did leave a comment. It is greatly appreciated, as always. It's likely that I will film another Q&A about Eurovision at some point in the future. Just feel free to leave any questions for me on any videos that I upload between now and whenever. I will see them, I will make a note of them, and chances are I will answer your questions and queries in the future if you forgot to leave a question for this particular video. Anyway, I have the comments right here. I'm just going to go right through them. I have seen them all, I have thought about them all a little bit, but uh, I do need to uh, really think about my answers again here, of course. The first question here is from Mark, who says, do you think some artists from this year deserve to be an interval act in 2021, like Iceland? What do you think about that? Um, I think it's an all right idea. At the same time, a lot of the artists who would have competed in this year's competition in Rotterdam will be back for 2021. So there's not much point having them as an actual artist representing their country and as part of the interval. For those artists that won't be coming back for 2021, we won't be seeing Sandro for Cyprus, we won't be seeing Eureka for Norway, having them as part of an interval act yeah, fine, if the Dutch broadcasters, t who are teaming up of course, decide that that's what they want to do, great. However, I think that they're going to stick with their original plans as much as possible. And we've already had the Eurovision Europe Shine a Light replacement programme, so my answer to your question is... I'm not sure if deserve is the right word, but certainly... If the broadcasters in the Netherlands decide that actually, yes, we do want those artists who were going to be in the 2020 contest but aren't here for 2021, we want them to make an appearance, uh, I think they ought to be given that opportunity alongside the original interval act that was planned for this year, which would have been exceptional, I'm sure. We were going to get a lot of former winners back singing their winning songs. Anyway, that was a long, rambling answer. Next up is Kevin, who says, Most underrated song this year? Well, I'm going to go through the list. I'm very tempted to say The Host Nation, jean Gu McCroy with Grow. I can't believe more people didn't respond warmly to that song. I'm convinced it would have done well in the voting, particularly with the juries. Um, Australia is a bit underrated. I think people judged the live performance more than the studio version. The studio version is very good, and no doubt about it is better than the live version that we had at the Australian National Final at the start of this year. Nevertheless, still underrated. Uh, I feel like Ireland was a little bit underrated. It's a really catchy song. Oh, Semi-final 2, Denmark, too cheesy for some, but that song, again, I'm pretty sure would have done quite well in the grand final uh, because it's charming and people do like a charming song in Eurovision as we saw with Denmark last year and even Italy I feel that the Italian song was quite underrated perhaps less so now that we have seen his performance in the empty amphitheatre in Verona which I think changed a lot of people's opinions about the song uh, but certainly before that, Fai Rumore was fairly underrated. And that song would have done well in the contest, no doubt about it in my mind. So I would say, out of the ones that I've just mentioned, honestly, I think maybe the Dutch song was the most underrated. Uh, where am I? Okay, next up, biggest guilty pleasure. I don't think there is such a thing as a guilty pleasure with Eurovision. 
You like the music you like. You like the genres you like. It's as simple as that. There's no guilty pleasure song for me. Um, I suppose for some Eurovision fans, it would be something like Irlande 12 Point, uh, which was the Irish entry for Dustin the Turkey in 2008. You know, something quite silly like that. But I don't really have a guilty pleasure ESC song. Not really. I'm not ashamed uh, to listen to any of them. <laughs> you know, not embarrassed by it. Uh, do you think more countries should sing in their own language? Yes. I just don't see it happening because English is widely spoken. Most people understand it. And if your song has a powerful message, ideally you want that message to be conveyed in a language that people are going to get. Uh, an example where this didn't happen was with Italy two years ago with uh, Non mi avete fatto niente. But they sort of got around it by having the uh, phrases of the songs... What am I on about? The phrases of the, the lyrics. The lyrics. That's the word I'm looking for. The lyrics came up on screen um, in various different languages. So they were still getting the message across, even though the song was completely in Italian. Anyway, Jordan next. Uh, quite a few questions from him, I believe. What's my opinion on Cyprus not reselecting Sandro for 2021, even though he was internally selected this year? And what do you think of the fans' reaction to it? As it seems, some fans are quite happy he won't be returning, which I think is quite unfair. Yes, it is quite unfair. No Eurovision artist deserves any hateful comments. Personally, though, I'll be honest, I'm not too fussed. I wasn't a huge fan of his song. However, if he were to come back in 2021, fine. I wouldn't have been bothered about that either. But, uh, yeah, clearly Cyprus feel that they can do better. Maybe they saw the reaction to running saw that not a lot of people were really gravitating towards it, and therefore had a couple of discussions and said, you know what, Sandro, thanks, but next year we're going to try something different. And I would not be surprised one bit if for 2021 we see Fuego 3.0 from Cyprus. Would not be surprised at all, because I think that type of music, we had Eleni Ferreira, we had Tamta, People responded very warmly to those songs. Now, even though Tamta did not do terribly well in the public vote, the song, when it was released, received a lot of praise from Eurovision fans. And I can see Cyprus doing something similar again next year. Uh, Sandro, maybe he'll come back at some point. I don't know. Maybe Germany will approach him, because I believe he is from Germany. Uh, you don't have to answer... The, do you think there is a bit of a gender bias in the Eurovision fandom towards the female singers? Can't say I've really noticed it. Uh, it seems like most of the time the singers that get the worst and sometimes mean reactions are male vocalists. Uh, I haven't really noticed this at all. Maybe I've just been a bit oblivious. But if anything, I think female vocalists do get uh, sometimes a lot of mean comments. I always think of Blanche for Belgium a couple of years ago. Uh, after she had her first rehearsal... Everybody in the comments uh, of that rehearsal footage uh, were saying things like, she can't sing, she's so nervous, she's going to flop, what a fail, Belgium have a great song, but live it's just not working, blah 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 blah. I think it really affected her, but she still finished fourth in the final overall. And I'm sure there's been other artists, I just can't think of them, but in terms of a gender bias, I'll be honest, I just haven't really noticed it at all. Uh, do I like that the running order is decided by the producers, or do I think it should be a random draw? We used to have a random draw. Personally, I think it is a good thing that the producers determine it, even though I do think they are a little bit biased. I do think they are a little bit biased. They are absolutely aware of which countries are the favourites to win. And, for example, this year, had the contest uh, gone ahead, let's say Bulgaria were drawn into the first half, they would not have been on within the first five songs. No way. They would not have done it. Because they would have been aware that Bulgaria was the favourite to win, and they would have stuck Victoria right at the end of the first half. Like they did with Duncan Lawrence, like they sort of did with Conchita Verst. You know, they know what they're doing. Um, and it would have been the same with Iceland as well. You know, however, I've always thought and I've always said, if a song is good enough, it doesn't matter where in the running order it is. So, let's say... Iceland were drawn into the first half of this year's Grand Final had it been going ahead. 
If Iceland had been put on first, people would have complained. But actually, if the song really is one of the favourites to win, then it doesn't matter that it's on first. Surely. You know, it's not that hard a song to forget. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that, yes, I do like the fact that the producers determine the running order because you don't want lots of ballads in one go. You don't want lots of up-tempo songs in one go. You want there to be a nice flow to the show. And the producers can uh, help that happen. For example, um, this year had the contest been going ahead. I know I keep saying that, but imagine if it was a random draw and uh, out came Bulgaria in position number two and then switzerland were number three and then iceland were number five or six that's three big hitters out of the way within the first half hour of the show people would have caused mayhem about that on social media so yes a running order that is determined by the producers i am fine with however i do think there is slight slight bias uh, what are the most overrated and underrated Eurovision entries in your opinion? I think I've made a video about this in the past. Uh, I think there's a blog post about it as well. There'll be a link to my blog in the description below as always. Overrated. Beautiful mess. I've said it. There it is. Christian Kostov. Beautiful mess. I think that song is fine. But the second best song of 2017. I'm not too sure about that. Um, definitely. And I've always said this one. Angel, Mika Newton, Ukraine 2011. I don't think for one minute that song should have been anywhere near the top four. Just saying. All my opinion. Don't take it personally. Um, I've always thought 1944 for Ukraine. Jamala, a little bit overrated. What else is there? Hmm. There's plenty, and I just can't think of them at the moment. Hmm. What else is there? I mean, last year, perhaps the Russian song. I don't think Sergei Lazarev should have finished above Luka Hani or Kate miller Heidke. Uh, but there we are. Or Kano. Or John Lundvig. But there we are. Uh, Benjamin Grosso was wildly overrated by the juries a couple of years ago. Uh, underrated. You are more likely to be underrated than overrated at Eurovision. Sweden 2010, I've mentioned plenty of times. Uh, Malta last year, Greece a little bit last year, even though the live performance wasn't great. Oh dear, oh dear. Ireland 2009 just popped into my head because I really like that song, etc. Oh dear, oh dear. I should have done my research. I'm sure there's a video about this on my channel. If not, I might film it. But there's so, so many. So many. Uh, Hungary last year as well. Uh, how many returning artists do I think we're going to have in 2021? I think we've got about 15 or 16 at the moment. I think we'll end up with about 25. Uh, certainly, I don't think we're going to get more than 30, maybe. But we'll see. It all depends on the broadcasters and the conversations that they will have with the artists in question. Certainly, if it was an internal choice for this year, um, I can see them coming back. Nine times out of ten. If it was a national final procedure... Who knows? Certainly, next year, we might not have many national finals if the broadcasters just say, yes, we're going to stick with our act for 2020. We'll see. Uh, next up, Laurovision. Do I think Iceland, as the big fan favourite, really would have won this year? I don't know. I don't think so. I can't... I couldn't envisage... That's what I'm trying to say. I couldn't see the jury's really going nuts for this. I mean, you have to finish in the top three of the public and jury vote. Ideally. And I think Iceland probably probably would have done. But, no. I, I, look, I'm saying it now. I just don't think Iceland would have won this year. I think Bulgaria might have done it. Switzerland would have pushed for the win. I'm sure Sweden would have been up there as well. And Russia. I don't think Russia would have won for one minute. But you never know. We'll never know. Uh, if Iceland had won this year's contest, had it gone ahead, I would have been thrilled about it. Because it would mean Reykjavik 2021, and I would absolutely try and go. Um, what placing do I think the UK would have received on the scoreboard this year? Do you think we would have come last again? Probably. Honestly? Yeah. We probably would have really struggled. 
The song would not have stood out enough if we had been on in the first half, if James had performed My Last Breath, say, within the first ten songs. We would have struggled so much, particularly in the public half of the results. It's a shame to say it, but there we are. Do I normally prefer or agree with the song that ends up winning, or do I prefer the runner-up? You seem to prefer the runner-up. Well, let's go through the past uh, 10 years or so. 2010, uh, I prefer the winner. 2011, I prefer the winner. 2012, I prefer the winner. 2013, I prefer the winner. 2014, I prefer the runner-up. 2015, I prefer the winner. 2016, the runner-up. 2017, the winner. 2018, uh, the runner-up. 2019, the winner. So I usually prefer the winner. Saying that, I'm not always a huge fan of the winning song. The last time my personal favourite was the actual winner was only Teardrops in 2013. So it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, out of all the artists that have been confirmed to be returning next year, which are you most looking forward to? Uh, you've mentioned John's Tears and Montaigne. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they bring to the Eurovision table next year. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what I'm looking forward to seeing what Hoover Phonic do. Um, I think Aiden will have a very strong song for Israel. Uh, I'm sure Destiny will have a very strong song for Malta. Jean Gu for the Netherlands. Roxen for Romania. Really looking forward to seeing what song she has. And uh, yeah, those are the only ones so far. Uh, where am I? Let's have a look here. Uh, yes, moving on. Ranovic. What countries do I think have the hardest chances of winning the ESC? Um, the countries that I think have the most difficult time of it are uh, those countries where maybe their music scene isn't as widely developed as somewhere like Sweden, for example. Um, you've put smallest size, definitely. I, I think size does matter <laughs> when it comes to Eurovision, unfortunately. These days, yes. Uh, but, you know, small countries are capable of winning. Azerbaijan did it. Israel have done it. Um, lack of neighbouring voting, that can damage your chances, more so perhaps in the semi-finals. Uh, anyway, continuing the previous question, how can you explain that Iceland, Malta and Cyprus didn't win until now, well they still haven't won, uh, while countries like Luxembourg and Israel won, and quite a few times? I just think music tastes have changed, I think more countries participate, that is perhaps the number one reason. It's so hard to win Eurovision. It really is. Uh, I mean, Iceland, Malta and Cyprus have competed for decades and have come close to winning, but they've never quite lifted the trophy aloft. Uh, I do think it's just because more countries participate and the quality is arguably getting stronger with each passing few years. I don't know. It's a difficult question to answer. A very interesting question, though. What does the UK need to do in order to finish in the top five? Well, isn't that the million-dollar question? Uh, we need to send somebody who genuinely wants to do it, who has control over most elements of the performance, who's written the song themselves, a song that they have complete faith in. Uh, the BBC need to trust them and promote the hell out of the song. They need to promote the song across Europe. It needs to have broad appeal. And this might sound strange, but I don't think it's that hard to do. I mean, Sweden have done it many times. Um, do I think the BBC doesn't want to win? I do think the BBC has more pressing issues. But one thing is for sure, if the BBC was to stage Eurovision again, they would put on a very spectacular broadcast. No doubt about that. Uh, so yeah, the UK, in order to finish in the top five, they need to send something current and not something safe. Maybe that's the best way I can answer it. Next question from Bars. Which country do you want to see returning to the contest the most? Andorra. Because they are the only country to participate but not participate in a Eurovision Grand Final. But honestly, whichever countries come back, I'm happy for. The more the merrier. Do I predict, this is from Nathan, do I predict that next year's top 41 will remain fairly similar to this year's in terms of the odds? Or will the tables turn and countries like Lithuania, Bulgaria and Switzerland end up as low-rated entries? I don't know. Very interesting question. We will find out uh, soon, of course. Um, I do think Bulgaria, Lithuania... 
Bulgaria and Switzerland, I do think, will be favourites for 2021. I have a feeling they will be. Lithuania, I'm not too sure about. Depends if the Roop are involved. Um, I mean, we might see a country like Estonia be one of the favourites next year, when they were complete uh, outsiders heading into what would have been this year's contest. Uh, maybe Norway next year will really struggle, whereas this year they would have surely done very well. Very interesting question. Uh, I think Russia will do well next year. They'll be one of the favourites again. Sweden will be as well. Uh, Iceland, that'll be very interesting. We shall see. Very good question. Uh, and then another one from Ranovic. Who do I consider as the top ten power horses countries? I think you mean power houses, but I know what you mean. In the Eurovision history. Well, let's think about this. Let's think about things. Okay. The top ten powerhouses, you know, the countries to beat. Sweden, obviously. Why? Because they arguably have the best songwriters in the world, they know how to do pure pop, and they have such a well-developed national final format that is tried and tested, and everybody seems to pay attention to it closely every year. They're just on the money. Russia, why? Because I think they have this really intense desire to win. Italy, because they have, they just do their own thing. They have San Remo, but it's not strictly speaking a national final. Classy, very successful musicians, more often than not, in the running. Fantastic. Sweden, Russia and Italy. Uh, arguably, Italy is the powerhouse nation. More so than Sweden. Um... Italy is the country to beat more often than not, I feel, especially as we move into this new decade. Uh, who else is there? I would have said Turkey, but they're not in it. I, I'm going to put Norway down because certainly they've had some very strong results over the past few years. Um, I think Norway have certainly uh, moved on from those null points and last places. I think it's going to be a while before Norway really struggle again. I think they've Got Eurovision on lock, if you see what I mean. Um, oh dear. Who else? Really, it's very difficult to say. I mean, Ukraine, always qualify. Definitely um, have impressed ever since they debuted in 03. Won twice. I might put Australia down. But then again, they haven't competed that much yet. And they haven't won. That's really it. I can't think of any more. Am I missing somebody obvious out? I could put Cyprus down, but it's only really been in the past two years that they've been fairly impressive. Um, I would have put Greece down, but not with recent form. If this was 2009, I'd be saying yes, absolutely. Greece is a country that I feel has just lost its way a little bit with Eurovision. Uh, they're not always regular qualifiers now. Uh, who else is there? Hmm. Hmm. There is somebody else that just popped into my head and I've completely forgotten which country it is. The Netherlands, of course, are usually pretty strong these days. And I would have said Belgium a few years ago, but not so much now. That's really it. I can't think of anybody else. Sweden, Russia, Italy, Norway, Ukraine, Australia, maybe. And the Dutch. And that's all the questions, ladies and gentlemen. This video ended up being a little longer than I expected, but I've answered every single one, I think. And feel free to leave questions in the, the comments section of this video as well. I will see them, I will make a note of them, and I will answer them at some point. Feel free to leave video suggestions as well. Check out my other social media pages. It's greatly appreciated. Now that the Eurovision season is absolutely dead and buried for this year, uh, it's going to be more and more difficult moving forwards to talk about Eurovision-related material. If there's something you want me to talk about that you haven't seen somebody else on YouTube discuss, let me know, I'll make a note, and I'll get on it as soon as possible. Thank you to everybody who left questions. Greatly appreciate it. Feel free to check out my other videos as well. If you're new to my channel, first of all, thank you very much for checking this out. I have lots of videos for you to enjoy on my channel, so please go and look at them if you so wish. Most of them are over 20 minutes long. I ramble a lot, you have been warned. 
yes, I really do think that's about it now. Apologies if the quality wasn't that great. And that's it, my second Eurovision Q&A. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, whenever that will be, bye for now.